Hi, everybody. This is um, David Sarita. I'm here today. Kind of, it's a surprise to me. We did have audio, David. There's no audio. No, my mic is there. My um, my mic is there. Can no anybody... audio. Hang on, just a second. Says my audio is here. We're talking about the transmissions and the. Everyone says they can hear. I don't have audio. Everybody says they can hear. Okay, audio. perfect. So we did the transmission using Jimmy Blanchett's massive antenna in the southern United States, and we were pointed at Mercury precisely through precision software and Mercury has since gone into retrograde. Um, actually, yesterday, Mercury went behind the sun, and it won't be back until the 18th of October. So what happened in response to the transmission is more, more mind-blowing than I could ever have imagined. This is not what I expected to happen. But um, within... 33 hours I actually counted from the time of the transmission, which was 1717 Pacific time, which is 517 Pacific time. We sent out a, a pictogram, an encoded message as a pictogram, not unlike the Arecibo message that um, astronomers sent out, you know, um, decades ago. And it, it was pointed at, at uh, Mercury. It went out at 432 megahertz at a court 125,000 watts sent out by Jimmy Blanchett. And we care after the pictogram, we sent the tone 144.1 Hertz in ratio to the transmission frequency 432 megahertz is a ratio of one to the speed of light in metric. And, and Jimmy and I explained that, which is an absolute phenomenal harmonic. And that was followed by the actual seven actual octaves of Mercury. And Mercury being the messenger planet for the god Mercury, which is one in the same as the Greek Hermes. And I also showed a correspondence of the nine levels of the angelic kingdom. At the bottom of the angelic kingdom, you have the, the, the common angel. And then as you go up the different levels of heaven, you start to get higher and higher and higher into the, the nine levels of the God field and you get into higher and higher levels of angels. Angels are not exclusive to the level they appear at. For example, angels can go up into higher heavens and they can come back down. So they're not stuck at the levels they appear to be. I experienced this in 1986 and 1980s. Um, the end of 1986, um, 1987, I think it was, in December 22nd, 23rd, where God took me through the seven levels of heaven. But I'm not here to talk about that today, because we, after the tones, the Mercury tones, we then sent a solo song by my recently deceased wife, Crystal Serena, and then we sent the voices of our children saying, calling all angels, calling all angels. You heard the voice of my littlest one astaria who's six years old and then my um, my 11 year old alira so that's what we sent out and at the end the last pictogram was actually you didn't see it but it was a picture of my youngest daughter's eyes and then i vocalized an urgent call for help to planet earth to the angels archangel gabriel and michael it was a very simple message but it went out and the response for me personally was astounding. Now, I was doing something different than most of you, is that I'm using my handheld radio <clears throat> tuned to 432 megahertz, which is the same frequency as the broadcast. So the second I press the call button, my whole body starts vibrating at 432 megahertz, which I demonstrated in a training video prior. So at first, I just felt an incredible opening in my crown chakra, and I went to sleep, and nothing happened the first night. And I thought, oh, well, maybe nothing's going to happen. Well, actually, it was the next night, which is the, the 26th, at 2 a.m., 
the most blinding, astounding vision occurred to me that I want to share with you. And I didn't think this was going to happen. I mean, I was a tree planter for 23 years in BC. I planted over a million and a half trees personally over those 23 years. And I always wanted to see the tree of life. You know, I, I had had over seven blinding visitations of, of, of Christ, of Jesus Christ, Isa, Messiah, Yeshua, shining brighter than our sun. And I wrote a book called Face to Face with Jesus Christ, which my publisher stole and still sells on Amazon today. People are, are trading copies for over $700 on Amazon of that book. And it was all stolen from me, just so you know. So I always said to God, I want to see the tree of life. And I, I wasn't thinking about the tree of life on the, on the night of the 26th. It was the furthest thing from my mind. So what happens is I go into this clear, lucid dream. And in this particular dream, which is around 2 a.m., which is around the time that the Tesla Schumann resonance hit a record peak, by the way. And the Tesla Schumann resonance hitting this record peak energy corresponds in the aftermath of the transmission. And I find that interesting because the first transmission that we did last summer on the Lionsgate also was followed by a huge Schumann resonance spike. Now, can I claim that's a response to the transmission scientifically? No, but with consciousness, I can tell you that that Schumann energy causes an awakening in all of us. It causes a lifting and a vibrational energy shift in every one of us because we're all on the planet. And what happened? This lucid dream, my eyesight, is probably a thousand times more pure than 2020 human vision. So I know it, it's a true vision. And in this vision, in this dream, it's not happening in my head. It's not something I'm thinking about. There's this huge table that looks like the Last Supper. And sitting on the other side of the table is my deceased wife, Crystal, with my good friend, Stephen Sipes, who is a true ancient Hebrew lineage Jew, who is the owner of the uh, Summerhill wineries where all the wines are aged in a huge pyramid. And Stephen was actually staying with my family at the time to, to celebrate my wife's um, celebration of life on the 24th of September, which is her birthday, right? So that's the day we sent out the transmission. So we're sitting at this table and we're having a conversation. I, I'm seeing my deceased wife, which is remarkable enough, but, but in the massive window behind them, this huge tree comes down, and above the tree is this cloud. It looks like Mount Sinai, like the sound, the cloud that settled on the Sinai. And there's flashes of lightning, and it's actually so powerful. The presence of the tree is blowing my mind, and it slowly, peacefully comes and overtakes us. And this blinding light rips out of the tree, truly at least 10 times brighter than our sun. I mean, I can look at our sun and I can look at the light coming from the tree and it's blinding and it's the most beautiful, pristine, peaceful light. And, the, and, the, and literally the voice of God says, I am the root of Abraham, David, Esau, Yeshua, however you want to call his name, but it's very, very silent. The, the voice of God is absolutely silent. And, and I hear the names of all the prophets, and this light is overtaking us. And I know that with all the, the, the lifetime that we experience on this planet, how much human beings suffer, how much my family has suffered, and the loss of my beautiful wife, and the light comes upon me, and it just lifts me, and it feels like a physical lifting. It's not like I'm weightless at this point. In the spirit, I'm still heavy. I'm a human body. And God lifts all three of us, my wife, Stephen Sykes, into the light, and it's sparkling and peaceful and blissful and full of love and perfection. And as I'm going up, I'm actually going up above the earth. I'm going above the earth and I can see the earth down below and the tree and the light of God is carrying us up, up, up. And I went up into the light and our human forms dissolved, literally dissolved. At one point I could faintly see it looked like Jesus holding me by the hand and carrying me up. 
And then we all dissolved into the light and there was no more form. There was no more images of, of God, of goddess. It was just the light. And I was so high above the earth and I was so blessed out. And I was up there a long time and God is talking to me. God is talking to me. And in response to the transmission that we sent out, I had no idea this would happen. And, the, and before, before we go into the rest of the vision, I want to tell you that in the Bible, almost every appearance of an angel or the divine, including in the book of Enoch, in the book of Enoch, it says, in a dream I was lifted as if winds assisted me and elevated me in flight. That's in the book of Enoch in the very beginning. And, and the lifting alone and the removal of human suffering in absolute perfection is so astounding, is so astounding. I literally thought I had actually died and I wasn't going to come back to my children. And God was, was speaking and it, it is so profound what this means, firstly, to, to use this technique of knocking on heaven's door meaning sending messages, getting people to participate by tuning their nervous system at the same frequency, and everybody having their own moment to ask for healing or help for our families, each other, and our planet at this particular difficult time in our history. And this is an incredible opportunity. And the first thing to me was, it worked. Oh my God, it worked. Something happened that is beyond my wildest dream, because if I count you know, in my 45 years of daily meditation practice and studying with meditation teachers from all over the world, there's only three experiences I've had that are equal to this. So it's not a small thing. What I felt going up into the light is, is, is literally like a near-death experience. So I, I came out of the vision and I got up and I checked the time. It was like 2.30 something in the morning, Pacific time. And I sat in meditation and just said, glory be to God in the highest, probably hundreds of times. And I was so grateful to God. I prostrated myself on the ground. I went outside. I could see the moon and this halo around the moon. And I went back to, I tried to go back to sleep. And my third eye started glowing with light. And all these psychedelic colors began. And the vision continued. I then see the tree of life and God, one and the same, like, there's no separation. The tree of life is in every, one thing that's so beautiful about this is it's universal. It doesn't matter whether you're First Nations, Native American or Canadian Indian or South American, Central American Indian. It doesn't matter whether you're Jewish, Kabbalah, Christian, Buddhist, Hindu. Everybody has the tree of life. And it's amazing that the universe and God, God has brought down the tree of life. So I see the tree of life coming out above the earth and, and I know exactly where it lands and it comes down, it lands and plugs its root system into the earth. And this tree is like, I want to say it's like Jack and the Beanstalk because it's so huge that if you know Revelation, if you know the book of Revelation, the tree is prophecy to come down upon the earth in the very end, in, in, in chapter 22 in Revelation. It actually states, um, I think it's in, in 22, 16, it states that I am the root of David, exactly the voice that I heard. It's just that I also heard Abraham and Jesus and all of the all the, the lineage of the prophets, I heard their names being recited, but very, very silent, very beautiful. Just like the way the book of Revelation describes the voice of God is as silent as running water in a brook. And, and so, so healing. So the tree reconnects with the earth. And I want to tell you where it connects with the earth. It connected with the earth in the American Southwest, somewhere between northern arizona and utah and i want to say utah more than that because when you're above the earth you don't see the borders of the states for god there are no borders but it landed in utah and i was like it's so beautiful I and mean, if you've been to moab utah which i took my family to so that's where it connected with the earth and these waves of light like ocean 
tsunami waves rippled out of the roots of the tree and were vibrating around the planet to give the earth a blessing. But see, you have to understand when you go to the to the the mythology of the Garden of Eden, there are two trees. The first tree, which Jesus told me in person, the real meaning of partaking of the proverbial fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. You see, a lot of people inadvertently took the side of the serpent, thinking it was good that our eyes were open, knowing good and evil. And it actually isn't, because for God, there is no good and evil. There's only love. And love is undivided. It doesn't judge. See, when you take in the knowledge of good and evil, you're taking judgment upon yourself. And your judgment will be different than your neighbor's. Your interpretation of what Jesus really meant in the parable will be different than your neighbor's. And some of you will align and say we agree, and some of you will disagree. And that's what Jesus told me is the true meaning of the knowledge of good and evil and why it's poison. Because the poison leads to the ego saying, I'm right and you're wrong. My interpretation of good is right and yours is wrong. Whereas in, in, in the Gospel of Thomas, Jesus said, in this world there's good and evil. It's good things are not good, and it's evil things not evil. That's actually in the, the Gospel of Philip. So when he says our good things are not good, what he means is God's good dwarfs any egotistical vision of goodness. So what we argue about and what is correct and what's incorrect is insignificant because humans cannot egotistically understand that God's good, which is infinite bliss, infinite love, infinite peace, infinite wisdom, is beyond the human ego structure. So we can't judge. That's why Jesus said not to judge at all, because judgment is poison. It makes you enemies of each other. So when we took in that knowledge, this massive drama unfolded on our planet for thousands of years. And then it says in Genesis, and now lest he put, put forth his hand and partake of the fruit of the tree of life and, and live forever and become as one of us, meaning gods, which is in the plural. Elohim is, is plural. So Jesus said this in the scripture that we are as gods, but we're not awakened to that yet. And how, and how we come to the partaking of the, of the tree of life in the end of Revelation, and that this vision of the tree of life, which is universal to all religions, Jesus never judged other religions. He never judged the Hindus, never judged the Buddhists. They existed in his time. Of course they did. Of course he knew about them. He never judged anybody's religion. And all he said is, I am the truth and the way and the light. And, 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 and to come by the Father, you have to come through, come through me. But see, the word I or me is an egotistical interpretation because Jesus is saying, if, if you know your scriptures, he is the I am. He is one and the same as the tetragrammaton, the I am, the universal self, that God is not a person. I didn't see a person when God spoke and carried me into the light. I only saw the light, and the light is indivisible. It, it loves all of humanity, all, all of us. It doesn't judge anybody. It almost brings tears to my eyes right now to, to, to feel the love of God in the tree of life. And, and, and the fact that the tree of life came down to the earth and bathed it in these waves of light in response to the call, this is way beyond an answer that I would expect. Now, remember, all things that we create in our world, where do they start? If you design a house, it starts in your head. If you design a business, it starts in your head. So, of course, if you make a phone call and you pick up the phone, the answer comes in your head. So, for the answer to come in the form of a, of a celestial vision of the tree, tree of life, which in the end of the Revelation gives us the 12 fruits for the, and, and the leaves, and the leaves are for the healing of the nation, not the fruits. It says the leaves are for the healing of the nations. Is an, is an insight that we have to end as a species this egotism 
of thinking we're right and the other person's wrong, even inside of our religions, to end the wars on the planet, to bring true peace, we have to no longer partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which causes us to judge each other as good and evil. That's a trick of the serpent. Uh, it's a mind trick. Once you suspend judgment, if you absolutely 100% suspend judgment in your life, you come to the tree of life. Because, because judgment is death. Judgment is war. But non-judgment is life. If we suspend all judgment, we become only life. And there is no death in us. So as I was going into the light, God spoke the words, renew yourselves. Renew yourselves in this light that when you suspend judgment in your own personal life, imagine suspending all judgment. If, if, I know it sounds difficult in the beginning because people do crazy things. But when you really suspend judgment, you actually become peaceful and you naturally resonate with the laws of the universe. You don't need to have the laws dictated to you. You naturally plug into the universal love field of the infinite I am because the true meaning of the tetragrammaton of the name of the God, God in the Bible is not a man sitting on a throne, not a woman, but the infinite I am. I am that which came into being is the true interpretation. And we are each our own I am's that came into being. So our unit, our I am awareness connects to the universal I am awareness. But the universal I am is much higher in vibration than our little I am's. But when you surrender, I mean, when I was being carried up, it was like the way a mom picks up a baby, this or the say or a daddy picks up a baby. Because I still pick up my six-year-old. She still likes to be picked up. And the feeling is so parental when God is carrying the three of us, my wife, who's going up into the sparkling, sparkling light, in shimmering, shimmering into the light. And my friend Stephen Sipes, shimmering into light. We we all disappeared. There is no more me and you anymore in in the light in the tree of life there's only life po pure positive life and in fact as i felt the gravity which is a balance and equilibrium of positive and negative electric charges as soon as god lifted me up the the feeling of weight became weightlessness and then pure pure positive energy and then going up going up going up going up you know when i was a tree planter i remember this experience where I was, I was alone a lot. My boss always left me alone. You know, there were bears running around and, you know, it was kind of scary at times. I had this whole day alone and I saw this little tree, just a baby. And I don't know why this little tree just kept beckoning me. And I was, you know, we had to plant over 1,500 trees a day, eight and a half feet apart to make our money, which was really, you know, slave labor and abusive labor in my opinion. But this little tree was shimmering, and I thought, you know, what is it about this tree? I can just feel it. It's like God is in this little tree. And I actually took my tree planting bags off, which weighed about 75 pounds, and I, I came up to the tree, and I bowed down in front of the tree. And, and that would be my first tree of life kind of experience in the here and now. But this experience is light years and light years beyond it. The feeling of being lifted the feeling of my wife next to me being lifted and knowing she has taken and god says renew yourselves renew yourselves in in the light that i am that that you are i am too and you really do get renewed in the light it's very similar to a near-death experience in my years of attending um, the International Association for Near Death Studies meeting in Los Angeles, headed by Darwin Jamon, and meeting so many people who had these kind of experiences, that is what the light does. It takes a beaten soul, which my wife was absolutely beaten from early childhood trauma and from this life. You are renewed in seconds in the light of God. And, and the forgiveness is instant. You have to forgive yourself your own suffering. And you have to forgive yourself from 
the horrible things that happen to you in in this renewal because you don't get to suffer anymore in heaven guess what you don't get to suffer in heaven you get to get blissed out and once you get into that bliss you you don't care anymore and believe me the things that have happened to some of us i know many of you have had your own absolute traumas and so have i you know losing my mother at 12 years old i cried every day for years with my brothers and my mom didn't die she just vanished and i saw her once a year if i was lucky for the rest of my life and my mother never even wanted to meet my own children so the the pain is all gone it's all gone in an instant and when god said the words renew yourself remember this is in response to the transmission and and this invigorates me to no end that we're going to continue these we'll probably do another one when mercury comes out of retrograde and um I'm, I'm very open to people's music and other recordings of other people's voices who want to put their voice on the transmission. Of course, we have to preview it. Um, can you hear me? Can you hear me yeah. Now? Yeah. Oh, perfect. So my friend Stephen Sipes, who's 77 years old and created this beautiful organic winery in Kelowna, BC, where all the wine is aged in this, this sacred massive pyramid. Um, he he's a master musician, and so is his family. So we're gonna we're gonna send out this long piano solo he did, and he's gonna put Hebrew prayers in between it, and that will become part of the transmission. But I'm inviting you, you know, go to my website and go to davidsarita.co, which you can see spelled on the screen. Click on the transmissions link and explore explore the page. And the next transmission date will, if, if you sign up, you'll get the next date. Again, the transmission itself is free. The membership of $11.11 a month is a donation, but if you can't afford that or you don't resonate with that, it, it's still free. We're, we're trying to build this. Um, the technology um, for Jimmy Blanchett to build this massive sacred uh, measurement antenna which we described in the previous episodes it is costly but um i just i just want to build this because we're going to hit now notice this in revelation that jesus refers to himself as the bright and morning star and and venus is the bright and morning star there's nothing more symbolic of understanding that venus is the bright and morning star and if you know Dante, who also corresponds to the to the nine levels of heaven, to the planetary spheres, including the sun, and Saturn is actually the seventh level of heaven in Dante's system. Um, Venus is the third heaven, which is which is really like the Garden of Eden. In in both Dante's and Emmanuel Swedenborg's descriptions of the third heaven, and it being one and the same as Venus. Try and understand that these planets and their wavelengths and their musical octaves and their frequencies communicate with our nervous system all day long. We're all interconnected with them. So think of them like toning bowls. And when we send a transmission to one of those planetary gongs, it rings in a very, very subtle way. But subtle is good. Subtle is very good. And then we get an answer so the the what what i've done is i've taken mathematically the the circumference of each one of the planets and calculated their respective frequencies and octaves and so when we start a transmission you just have to listen to those and your nervous system gets tuned to that planet so when we're ready to go to venus we're going to the planet of love of human love of of human held love and actually shockingly dante found that everyone in the third heaven is in their garden of eden nude body state but their nude bodies are absolutely perfect and renewed and they shine with luminous and ecstatic light and it's interesting that both swedenborg also reports the same thing swedenborg doesn't go higher than the third heaven which is venus and 
he reports that everybody there is nude. So, so God takes us back to our perfection in the Garden of Eden before we took in the knowledge of good and evil when we didn't judge our nudity. We were not ashamed of it either. We were not ashamed of it either. And that's interesting. So we'll be going on to Venus after probably doing Mercury one more time. And um, so, again, go to davidsarita.co. Also, I'm seeing some of these messages from people. We'd love to have a sharing. Um, I'm interested in other people's music to send me recordings to send out on transmissions. I'm interested. We can, do, we can do we can do one just for sharings if you want, David. We should do that. Yeah, you know, so keep your recordings short because Jimmy's amplifier overheats. We basically messages need to be a minute or less. So you can even send in a recording with music in the background. I mean, I used my children's voices. I actually asked in my local community if anybody else's children wanted to participate, but I think everyone was a little shy and they didn't want to do it. So I sent out my kids saying, calling all angels. It was really sweet, you know, very, very, very pure. So um, that's it for the update for today, everyone. Um, I'm going to come back next week and give people a tour of my website so it, it kind of give you a guidance on how you move through it i mean we have we have things that are very entry level very very affordable and we also have some very very high-end um, tools for consciousness there that that are are, are quite expensive and, and they're all handmade pieces of jewelry the staffs and the scepters but um i just wanted to share the experience today again i wasn't expecting something this spectacular there's no way to describe the feeling of being lifted into the, the, the most ancient, ancient I am presence in the light of God. It, it makes you remember that that's where we're all from. And we just, we, God is saying, renew yourselves. So with everything going on in the planet, there are deep insights that God gave me. And the, in order to heal the situation right now, I, I am is asking all landlords to cut rents in half just right now for everybody on earth because we are all we are all overstressed out. We're all we're I got this came to me last night in a vision. I actually heard this that landlords need to forgive the poor. Nobody should be homeless on the street. And we're way too stressed out. And the billionaires on the planet, some of them are doing wonderful things with their money, but the selfishness is is gotten beyond reason. There's no reason for a single human being to have that much wealth for their own self. Start sharing it. Start rebuilding new mm -hmm. sustainable cities and communities. Bring, imagine the tree of life being the center of each new community. Build new cities, new models, because we have the technology, the, the insights. For the new technology have already happened in people's minds. We just need to do it. And I know many of those billionaires will probably won't budge, but that's the message I got. Um, anyway, um, I have to get back to my little one. And thank you for, for coming here today. And there's a replay of this, right? It shows it will re record. Yes, yes. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, absolutely. Okay, wonderful. Have a great day, everybody. And uh, please share. Please share your music and your messages that you want to go out on the transmissions. Thank you.